Hi everybody, hope you're doing well. Today I have a really, really great surprise. I am joined by the wonderful Dave Olson. Hey everybody. From Chicago Paranormal Investigators. For those of you that follow me, I have mentioned Dave on various different uh, segments. And what Dave does is he is the paranormal. He is the Ghostbuster. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably the easiest way that we could talk about it because then people are going to go, oh, okay, I know what you do now, <laughs> you know? Right. And I just love what you're about. Uh, thank you so much. I mean that. Number one, it's a pleasure to have you. It's, it's an honor to be here. Uh, you're so nice. But, you know, it, it's interesting because week after week, we, you know, Travis and I, uh, we, we do these YouTube videos and, and they're wonderful because we try to educate people so much on various different things in the spirit world. Right. And I believe in such a big part to what you do. And the reason I, I believe in it so much is because what you do, you facilitate the evidence. You know, I have a lot of skeptics and they're saying, yeah, well, da, 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 and I don't know. And it's interesting because I love what you do because... When I can come in and I've seen, because I've been fortunate to right. work with you and I'm very humbled by that, but it's it's interesting what I have walked into some of these facilities that I've worked with you and I have seen certain spirits or I've seen this or I've seen that, you back it up with your equipment and you get it right on tape, you I, I get the voices. so important. Yeah. yeah. Because you're awesome. You're so talented. <laughs> and it's so exciting when I could back it up. Or, and you're like 100% right, you know, and I tell you, there's so many times where we'll have building owners, uh, to family members, they're in shock, even my team members, and myself, jaw dropping, <laughs> how the hell does she know this stuff, <laughs> you know, and then especially when we get some evidence to back it up, it's, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, but see, I need you, because you know what, you have over and over, time and time again, have proved that what I have seen, what I have, what I talk about, you make that the reality. Because so many times, you know, I can say, yeah, this happened and this happened, but you know what? The only one who's going to know that are the loved ones. But right. what about the rest of the world? You're right. So you know, I, and I, I love I started that. out that way too. I, I have yeah. to admit, I started out skeptical, even though stuff happened to me when I was younger. But I'm the type, I have to experience it myself to believe. Mm-hmm. And I tell you, I'm a believer. I mean, I 100% I believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise, right back at you. <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, and then experiencing the paranormal for myself, there is 100% something out there. There so is. I, I'm, I'm definitely a believer now. I started out, even though I experienced stuff when I was younger, and as I grew older, it made me curious, but I can honestly say now. So what, all right, this is, you just opened up a, 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 a door here. How did you get started in this, Dave? Well, I started out, basically, um, what really got me curious, as a kid, I, I would hear, at times, disembodied voices. And I remember, at times, calling my mom, Mom, could you come in the room? I hear mm -hmm. these muffled conversations. I don't know what they want or what they're saying. Mm. And uh, as I grew older, it's it stuck with me. And, and to this day, at times, I can still hear them. Uh, and in fact, I, I heard one this morning. Right, and, right. Uh, yeah. From something we did yesterday. Right. And um, so, I, and I know I'm not going nuts because I'm, now I'm able to document it on recordings. Like mm -hmm. I'll be on a case. Even maybe with you, I'll be, did you hear that? Mm -hmm. I, there was a female or a male voice. Mm -hmm. And only people that wait your gift usually uh, are the only ones that can hear it. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go back and it's on the recordings, you know, on the, either the camcorder or on the voice recorder. And so I, I think I'm a little bit on the sensitive side too. So, oh, I think but, you're very uh, sensitive. I think you're also an empath. 
And for those of you that don't know what an empath is, it's, you know, somebody that actually feels like it can be happening to them. Yes. And and you feel other people's worry, their pain, their I suffering. I do, actually. <laughs> you are. You yeah. are. And I, and I did. And, you know, I, this is why I think it's all coming to you. It comes to you in such a big way because, number one, you're sensitive to it. But I always say it's the more you practice it, the more that you do it, you become stronger. I agree. And I, and I thank you a lot for it because without you, wow. you know, getting into this, yeah. you, you taught me how to protect myself. Yeah. I mean, there's, I'm... There's always room to learn more. Right. You know, each investigation I do, each experience with you, mm -hmm. it's a learning experience. It is. I'm very thankful. And you know, it's funny. It's the same thing. Whenever we go to a building, and I'm lucky enough to, to be with you, I don't know what to expect sometimes. You know, I don't. Maybe I'll get something a day before, but sometimes I'll get something even an hour before, and it's still a surprise. I won't know what that means until I get there. Right. So it's the same thing when a client comes. When a client comes here, I have no idea what the reading is going to be about. I, you know, I'm as much in the dark as they are, and then we see what transpires in the reading, and then all of a sudden, boom, it comes full circle, and, it, and it's nice. But it's kind of the same thing with you. Right. So, okay, explain to people what it is that you do. So what kind of people call you? Homeowners. I, I get a lot, of, a lot of calls from uh, people that are scared of their own house. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's, it's terrible. I mean, to live yeah. in fear day in and day out because you don't know what's going on. Right. Sometimes they just want to make sure they're not going nuts. They hear all these noises or see things, and, and they just want confirmation that they're not nuts and mm -hmm. there's something there. Right. Um, I'll get calls from business owners. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I'll get calls from, you know, uh, locations that uh, are more well-known for the paranormal and... Uh, you know, they want some help, maybe given a, a tour or just to document stuff for them. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Yes. Because they just want to know what the history was. Right. Or it could back up some of the stories, maybe some folklore or, uh, yeah, just some of the stories throughout the years, uh, you know, or what people feel. Mm -hmm. And then I could back it up for them and give them uh, some pieces of evidence, you know, maybe some names to go with, uh, you know, with some of the stories. How long have you been doing this? You know, I started out and towards the end of 2008, mm -hmm. just maybe with a voice recorder, a night vision camcorder, and some uh, EMF meters that detect spirit energy. And uh, I, I remember what really got me hooked. I was working my side job, which is, uh, the land has so much history. It was uh, a saint asylum and a mass grave site. Uh, and I remember I caught my very first EVP there that said, what are you doing? I got hooked. Wow. I'm like, oh my God, there is something out there. That is so cool, from isn't it? 2009 and on, I just dumped tons of money and equipment. I, I have basically all the stuff you see on TV. Oh, I know. It is so impressive what you have. My jaw dropped when I'm telling you, your facility, I can't even call it a van. It's more of a truck. I call it the Batmobile. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just call it a command center. Okay. It is cool. It's like an ambulance, ghost busting. I God, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just unbelievable. I, I'm, I'm shocked with what you've got and what you put into it because this is like high tech stuff. Yeah, I, I had to work right. a lot of overtime, okay. side jobs to. So what do you think you've got? All all right. What do you, How much money do you think you've got into this? You know, if, if I you had, had all like up, one, I, I would have to say it's probably a hundred thousand or yeah, more. Yeah, exactly. Okay, this is what I'm telling you, people. If you're you know listening and you hear this, you're going to say, "Really? Yeah, this is real." You, you know what's so great though about the ambulance? I mean, I used to have a six by twelve trailer. Yeah. Sold that, got the ambulance because it really helps with the setup. You have built-in power, got the monitors, oh, system I know. channel to the air system. Everything's built in. And you have a place to go to. <laughs> You know, say for six team members investigating a house, mm -hmm. you don't want all six members in the house. Yeah. You're going to destroy possible evidence, you know, with all the extra noise you're making. So I have a place where people could sit, watch the monitor, take notes, mm -hmm. listen to audio, while two or three other investigators are investigating, so you kind of switch off. But so high tech. I was, it, it's, it's, it's utterly impressive. And I'm Thank telling you, you I, I... I'm very happy with you it. You should be. Yeah. You should be. <laughs> I, I, I just want to talk about that a little bit and elaborate more on it because it is really something to see. All right. Now, I'm going to ask you another question. I know sure. you've done so many cases. And I, I... What are some of the cases that left you, like, jaw-dropping? I tell you, I, I've been lucky enough where 
I got a, a handful of apparitions. Now, the best apparition I captured mm -hmm. was a building in Englewood. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a full-bodied apparition. Mm -hmm. and, and you could, by looking at it, you could see how transparent it is. You could even see the baseboard through the leg. Mm -hmm. I mean, through the, yeah, through the ankle leg area. But it, it's a, it's a full-bodied. I was in that location myself at the time. I didn't even realize it was standing right in front of me. Did you get that? Did yeah, you get I, the actual image of a spirit man? Yes. A male? It's a male, yes. You got that? Yes. Okay. And, uh, so, yeah, I was using a, a full-spectrum camera okay. with special illuminators with IR and UV lighting. And uh, the theory is they they believe the spirit world's in, uh, in that spectrum of uh, lighting, the IR and UV. Now, when you get something like that, can you tell what era it is? Uh, this one, no. I, it wasn't okay. that much detail. I mean, you could tell it's a male. Yeah. But uh, okay. I almost think... It looked like a worker. It almost looked like it had some type of overalls. Okay. And, Interesting. Uh, okay. But, but yeah. you got that. Yes. It was See? standing right in front of me, That's maybe so about cool. 10 I feet away. I love this. Oh, I love awesome. this. And then uh, my very first one I captured, and I'll never forget this, I actually heard it walking. It was a distance. It was right next to a tombstone. It, mm -hmm. it was uh, out near Wisconsin Dells. I think it was Portage, Wisconsin. There's a... Uh, a cemetery in the middle of nowhere, almost like Batcher's Grove. Mm. And um, I kept on hearing crunching. There was a lot of acorns on the ground. I could hear, I'm like, what the heck is that? Mm -hmm. So I scanned the area with thermal imaging, which is really important. Thermal yeah. imaging is like what the military uses, picking up heat signatures. Right. And, and um, you know, cold spots. And it's a very good tool uh, to use with the paranormal. And I'm scanning the area thinking I'm going to find some animals, a deer or something, because we're outside. Mm -hmm. You always got to think logical first. Right. So I put that down, and I took my specialized camera using the UV and IR lighting, snapping photos. I usually try to take maybe 10, mm -hmm. one spot, move over 10 more, so I could compare all the uh, pictures together. Yeah. And if you get them in multi-pictures, uh, then it's usually not paranormal, but if it only shows up in one, and the nine other ones, there's nothing. Mm. It's a good chance it's paranormal. But I caught an apparition right next to a, a tombstone, oh. a gravestone. See, that's great. And that's what I, I believe that. was walking, and I heard the crunching. So you got a body, literally, I mean, yes. in, a, in a vision, in a visual way. They're spirits, but that body is coming, it's projecting. Yes. And you actually have proof now that this is what's walking around. Right. And then yeah. late, maybe half hour later, that same area, same uh, cemetery, uh, there was a, a different medium out there, and he goes, and, and we heard stuff, a movement coming out of the brush, you know, there's bushes um, right along the cemetery, and th I thought it was a deer again, so I'm scanning with the thermal imaging, looking for a heat signature, thinking I'm going to pick up an animal. Mm -hmm. There was none. So uh, the medium uh, from Wisconsin, he goes, Dave, grab your camera. A male just stepped out of the brush. I'm talking to him now. So I grabbed my camera. Mm -hmm. My God. You got it. Oh, yeah. Uh, detailed. It, it looked like almost like a, a baggy uniform of a soldier, and their soldiers buried there. So cool. I even sent this away. Everyone was in awe. Mm -hmm. I sent it away to the professionals who made the cameras, and they had roundtable discussions on it. Nice. And they were, they're like, Dave, could we use this? We'll give you yeah. full credit for it. It yeah. was just, it's just amazing. I love that. And what's really cool about that is not only did I get the full-bodied apparition, but I captured voices to go with it, a male's voice answering the medium at the time. So you're getting the whole picture and you're putting it all together with what you're getting in pictures, what you're getting in voices, you know, footsteps, the whole bit. You're getting right. it all. So you're doing the complete and you're showing it as a visual to prove to people that this is what's going on in your facility. It, it takes me, after an investigation, it takes me about three weeks, maybe a month to go through everything B before I put something out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not perfect, mm -hmm. but before I put something out there as evidence, I'll go through every minute of video, wow. every picture, every audio recorder that we had going. I mean, we, we might have eight, uh, 16 cameras going wow. uh, for 10 hours. I have to sit there minute for minute, second for second, handheld stuff that we're using. Voice recorders have been going for eight hours. And so I have to compare everything, and it takes a lot of time. Because I, I take it seriously. Oh, I know you do. I mean, the last thing I want to put out there is something that's false. Right. So I, I do the best I can, 
and like with the pictures, yeah. um, if I have a voice at the same time, or you know, it, it helps validate. I love that. Now, going back to um, the Downers Grove. Okay, let's talk about that for a minute. Now, we were talking about earlier how you had called me because uh, you wanted me to come out and you know see what I saw. Now, this was. A murder suicide yes now I didn't know that and uh, I remember talking on the phone like I said and I just saw a man that was very deranged and I knew that he killed okay right um, and he was coming at me but not to, to do anything to me but just shh, I'm getting the vision he says you know I remember I says you know Dave I'm coming from a shower a bridal shower so um, I'll get there, and you said, well, I'm going to be there as early as 5, you can get there any time, and I said, probably by 7, okay? Yeah, it took us about 4 hours to set up all the gear that night. Did you? I remember. So I remember getting, you know, on my way there, and I remember my husband, Tom, right. is driving, and I'm coaching him to, to, to drive because, you know, he goes, you could go by yourself, and you'll meet with Dave, and I said, oh, come on, don't you want to go? And <laughs> I was making a joke out of it because I just didn't want to drive. I was too tired. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, come on. And he goes, all right. He never says no. I, he drives me. So as we're going, I remember that I see a ton of wires as we're driving in Tom's truck. Remember, remember that? that? Yes. I see wires coming from the ceiling. And I'm like, what is all that? So Tom goes, what, what are you looking at? And I said, there's a ton of wires all over here. He goes, what? I go, yeah. I go, he goes, huh. I go, what do you think that means? He goes, don't know but I'm sure you're going to find out. I go, okay. So we get there. Mm -hmm. And I remember meeting with the poor wife or mother, the woman that was there. Right. And what a sweet soul she was. Do you remember how upset and how she was crying? And oh, she was so emotional. I, I, I had to calm her down first. Right. And she had her son, who was such a sweet boy yes. at the time. I think he was all of maybe 10 or 11 years old. If I remember right, he was getting... Not picked on, but bothered by the spirits who were trying to communicate with yeah. him, which was scaring him. Yeah. Which is understandable. So, so I remember talking to her, and then we sent her off, and then we started to go look through the house because that's a really good thing. It's nice that you had the house to yourself. And I remember going up and down and actually going back in time, and I actually saw this man having an argument with his one daughter. Now, this man, who was the father, had two daughters. And a yes, wife. Yes. Okay. Uh, the one daughter, sweet girl, in her room. And the other girl, which was his daughter, the younger one, I want to call her the rebel. Uh, she was a cocky kid, <laughs> as all teenagers are. And I remember it was really getting to him, and they were having a fight, and she stormed away. She goes up the stairs, slams the door on him, and he goes, you're not going to slam the door on me. He got mad. She would. She locked it. That's what set him off, because she locked the door, and he couldn't come in. So what do you think he goes and does? Mind you, now the wife is downstairs in the basement. He goes, he was so angry, goes and gets the gun, and he literally snapped. And I saw it. The wife now was coming up the stairs, and she's like, she sees now that ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, he's shooting everybody. And now he looks at his wife, she runs, goes back into the basement, and he shoots her. And then he pulls the gun on himself, ironically. I remember this. Now, I see all of this, and then I see a very scared young man in the closet. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember that. I said, oh, my God, there is a boy that's in the closet, and he's trying not to make a sound. Apparently, it was, and you confirmed that it was a cousin that was staying with them, but he had no recollection that he was even there. And this poor kid is sitting in the closet, scared and petrified for his life, which I don't blame him because this man just shot everybody and now himself. Now, I saw a, that. It was amazing how you got that because okay? they made sure you had no knowledge of anything. I know. But I didn't I, even know I, where I, I was going. Right. Doing history on the place, on oh, the setup. and Horrible. Yeah. Okay. There was arguing. He went up there. He is the little boy here? No. no. Okay. He yeah. shot her. Grabbed her down. Okay. The wife tried to, to, to stop him. He ended up shooting her. Both came back down. Somebody's hiding there. 
Okay. In the closet. Yeah. Okay. And that's why I said I don't yeah. feel anything with the basement of a tragedy. It was here and here. Okay. And 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 that's exactly what happened. Because I saw it. If I see it, it happened. Gotcha. They're they're playing it back. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't sound good. I mean, yeah. but no, I mean, but, you, but it is because you can pivot that. I yeah. mean, you can really focus on that. And like I said, when you play your equipment, that's what you ask it. What do you want us to know? Yeah. So now, I remember going outside and seeing the garage, and you're like, anything? I'm like, no, it's just a garage. I get nothing out of it. But there was this work outhouse kind of. I don't know what you want to call it, tool shed. Right. Yes. Okay, but it was a pretty big one. Yeah, it was. Right. Yes. Okay, I remember I, I said, open that up. And I'm like, okay, can we get the keys? And you're getting the... All of a sudden, what do I see? The gazillion wires from the ceiling. Put the wires, Tom. 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 Oh, Tom. I saw wires. Okay. Um, well, you know, he might be still in the. Honestly, house. I don't get anything bad here. So, you might want to take the cameras and maybe you'll get something out of him here. This is where he was most happiest here. Oh. He was better when he could focus alone. Here's what Tom said, well, there it is. <laughs> and everybody's looking at Tom like, what? But there it is because I saw it on our way there, all the wires, 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 wires. So interesting enough, I remember the wife coming back to me and saying, she came home with me. I remember. I she didn't realize me. you were you were trying to call me on my cell phone. Yeah. To tell me that because yeah. you weren't sure what to do because right. you didn't want to wreck our case at the time because yeah you left and and they followed you some of them yeah followed you home. It was the mother. The mother. Yeah. The mother. Okay, or the wife. However you right. want to, you know, her husband killed her. But I thought I don't know. Do I tell you? Do I not tell you? And. Anyway, I, I didn't really tell you anything until later. And you were busy, and I wanted right, to let I had you my complete. Phone off and right. The next day, I found right. out. So I remember she said to me, "My husband wasn't a bad man. He, well, for whatever reason, she goes, he just lost it. But he didn't mean to kill us. It's a very heartfelt thing to hear." She says, "We're ready to go through the light if you can do that." And I says, "I can." I says, now I'm going back to the house on Tuesday. Right. You were nice enough to go back and, yeah. Remember? and follow him. Yes. And I said to her, don't worry. I says, we'll do it. So that was Saturday night when I did the investigation and came home. Right. Sunday, I get him, the man who did all of this, who shot the girls, his wife, himself. And he said to me, I don't want to burn in hell for what I did. I remember and I just, you, yeah. my heart bled for him. And I said, you're not going to. I said, you're going to go through that light and you're going to be with God. And you know what? It's whatever God's going to do. But you need to go through that light with your family. He goes, well, I'm ready to go now. I said, nope. I'm going to send you with your family and you're all going to go together. And he, he wanted to go because he goes, I'm trusting you. He goes, because I'm really scared. I said, I know you are. I says, but it's not about that. But you need to go through that light. That's why they stayed behind. He stayed behind because he was afraid. Right. Okay? And he thought that he was going to burn in hell. The family stayed behind because they wanted to be with him. Right. Okay? So here you've got four spirits that are earthbound and had to, they had nowhere to go. This is why this is very important to do. It is. Yes. So I went back on Tuesday and... The now the girl who's occupying the house, um, she says, what are you going to do? I says, I'm going to get them to go through the light. And she goes, well, do you want to go anywhere? I says, I'm going to sit in the stairwell because that's when the two murders happened right there. And I wanted to be there. I wanted to stay there. You know, I, I don't mean to interrupt, yeah. but you could actually, I remember even before you getting there, yeah. you could feel the heaviness. I mean, I can't even des describe it, but I could barely breathe. Mm -hmm. in the areas where the other murders happened mm -hmm. and you picked up uh, right on it but um, it was very heavy it was it was horrible but I sat in that you know with the stairs and I started now to proceed now I, I want to make this really clear that old house she had a lot of heavy blinds yes okay? I do remember that do you remember that yes. so there wasn't a lot of sun there wasn't light you know I, I didn't want to say anything that's her house right so I just figured, okay, I'm here to do a job. I'm going to get them all to cross over, and that's what I did. I was trying to do. So I go in my own little thing, okay? It took me about 15 minutes to do it. 
and I'll tell you, it was wonderful to get them into the light. They all were willing, except for the youngest daughter, the rebel. I'm scared. She didn't want to leave because she didn't want to leave her room, and she only knew what she had. And I said, I promise you, if you go into the light, you can come back and forth as often as you want. And finally, I got her to go too. But they all four went together as a family in the light, which was beautiful. It took me about 15 minutes to do. When I opened up my eyes, I see the woman that who now occupied the house and she's sitting on her dining room chair and she's sobbing and i said are you okay what's wrong and she says you have no idea what you look like i go what i look like why what's wrong i, I had not, i didn't i didn't understand that right she goes oh my god she said whatever you were doing and getting this family into the light you glowed with light i said really I didn't know because I never saw me. I mean, you you know, when you're doing the work, you're not into all the other stuff that's around. I didn't know. I said, what did I look like? She said, you had like it was a thousand flashlights on you. She called me up later. I mean, before you even told me, yeah. she called me up sobbing. And she said your aura was glowing. That's what she said. And I, I tell you, I, I, I couldn't get off work that day because I had to take off work for her, her investigation. But yeah. I would have loved to have been able to see that and document. That. I wish you did. I didn't even know. Yeah. I didn't even realize she, that this is what I did. She called me up sobbing. Yeah, she was crying. Yeah. She was crying. And I remember, and she goes, I know they're gone. She goes, I felt it. And she says, how can I ever thank you? I says, you just enjoy the house. And I said, do me a favor. There's no reason to keep the blinds down. Open them up, I said. Let the light in. And for those of you, right? right? For those of you that are watching, do not keep your home dark. I get it at night. You don't want peeping toms looking. And Yeah, the blinds should be down at night because you want your privacy. But during the day, open it up. I was guilty of that myself. Because spirit, they focus on the dark. They like it dark. They don't like the light. Okay? Earthbound spirits are negative spirits. They don't like the light. Put it and open it up. This is something that's so important. I had to change my ways because I was guilty of that well, at the beginning. It's okay. until, uh, you know. That's okay. But you know what? This is everything. So, oh, God. It's one of them sad but feel good cases. It was, it was a horrible yeah. case, but it was right. a, a good case that everybody finally had a happy ending. Right. On both sides. On both sides. Right. Well, thank you. But, okay. um, yeah, I was, and, you know, I followed up with her and, the house is 100% different. Yeah. Uh, that heaviness is no longer there. Yeah. And that opened my eyes. I mean, I, I believed, I always wanted to believe. Right. But that case opened my eyes, to believing in the light and uh, and. God, I love that everything. you said that. Thank you for saying that. Uh, I'm serious. I know you do. Because, you know, I, I know you do. Everyone, you know, until you experience it and see it for yourself, you have, you know, you have doubts and you want to believe, but yeah. that made me a believer in that case. He came home early. He wasn't supposed to be home yet, something someone in the neighbor said. Oh, my God. You know what time it is? Maybe he came home, but the mom was here, so it's not like they were or whatever, but maybe just the fact that she was here with her. So he off. sent her away with the dog. Sent her away and went on his rampage. This is very interesting. I mean, who knows? It could totally not be the story, but it could be. It could be. Jen, can you help us with what happened and tell us why you all were killed? home but the mom was here so it's not like they were or whatever but maybe just the fact that she was here with her so he off. sent her away with the dog sent her away home but the mom was here so it's not like they were or whatever but maybe just the fact that she was here with her so he off. sent her away with the dog sent her away home but the mom was here so it's not like they were or whatever but maybe just the fact that she was here with her so he off. sent her away with the dog sent her away And he sent her away with. And he sent her away with. And he sent her away. And you know, it's interesting. You know, for those of you that don't know, but Dave is a Chicago police officer, and he works with uh, other police officers, firefighters, and he's got this magnificent group of people Thank you. that are. And I have to tell you, all of your people that work with you are phenomenal. Thank you very and much. And I think they all have a gift as well. You know, I agree. I, I do. Really do some. I'm more sensitive than others, but I, I think the more and more we work together and they're doing investigations, uh, 
they they know they can feel it now the difference oh, yeah. between uh, mm-hmm. you know what's spirit and energy and what's just maybe the little heebie jeebies of being scared or, or something but yeah now they know but but uh, yeah the, I tell you Jen uh, Victor mm-hmm. and uh, Liz mm-hmm. and yeah Amber yeah they yeah. definitely could feel oh they know. Yeah. They know. I can tell that they know, and they know the difference. And I think also the experiences through the years have helped them yes, as well. So I, I have to say it's phenomenal. I, I believe in what you do. I, I love the validation that comes with what you do. And it does help me and people like me come to more of a truth. Right. So I do like that. Here's the best thing. It's a, This is what I always say. When I get a client that comes, and when they leave, they're like two different people. Okay? Yes. When what I do. All right, now what you do is when you come to a house that everybody's petrified and staying and can't even sleep, to people being able to go to sleep and enjoying their house. That means a lot. Exactly, and you're able to do that. And that, to me, is monumental. So I applaud you for doing that. I really do, because this is all stuff that you do. And, you know, I mean, you work a lot. You're, you know, you're constantly working as a police officer, and I, I have respect for you for that oh, all alone. Thank you. But then on your after hours um, and your day offs, right? you're doing this. This yeah, is real. And it's not just the investigation. I mean, to do an investigation, I have to start setting up right. um, a week or two in advance, I, right. charging all the batteries, making sure everything's in working order. Um, and then after the investigation, I mean, we could have cameras rolling, say, from... Two in the afternoon mm-hmm. to five in the morning. So this is like an all-day process right. because you know what? You've got to get these spirits when you can get them. Right. You just can't. You know, it's funny when when people come in my office. I'm here to be. Uh, you know, I, I want to connect with my mother. Okay, where is she? Well, it doesn't kind of come that way. They don't come on command. <laughs> right. Okay. Let's start talking about something, and then all of a sudden, boop, 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 mom will mosey on in. It's the same thing with what you do. Okay. Let's see when they are in the mood to present themselves. Right. Is that right? Yeah, you could go for hours. Right. Yeah. And maybe you think you have nothing, and then boom, it just it'll come. It'll, yeah. And exactly. I am, you know, uh, I, I mean, what I have seen, what you have gotten on your video, oh my God, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I, I've, been, I've been very lucky, and I don't want to jinx myself, but I, I've been. Yeah. <laughs> I, when, it, when it comes to this, I've been, I've been blessed, and uh, you know, I. I think some of it could be maybe they see me and some of my teammates mm-hmm. in a in a different way. You know, yeah. maybe they could see the they want to communicate because maybe we're a little bit more on the se- sensitive side, and um, and all the equipment that I in- invested in seems to help too. It, uh, it's funny to too because every time I've come to one of your places that you wanted an opinion, um, I I ask. Are you ready for me? Like, you know, the permission. I ask, is it okay that I come in? I started doing that after you told you me. You notice a big yes. difference? Yes, you asked for it. Okay. Yeah. okay. So when I get that go-ahead with them, it's amazing because when you do that, it's it's interesting how much spirit does want to talk to you and how much it wants to show you versus you just coming in and bulldozing right. yourself in. And you know what? They want the respect. They want the respect You're is right. right. So when you do that, listen, I remember when I was at the Congress Theater and I was doing that. You were, let me start off, you were amazing. <laughs> I mean, Aww. I could still visualize so the owner freaking out. How does she know this? <laughs> I don't know why. You know, I just... <laughs> it's not documented anywhere. No, no. I, he pulled me aside and he's like, how does she know this? And I know he tried to trick me couple of times, yeah. you know, and I get, I get it, you know, but it's interesting because when the spirits were so humble, it's like a, a human being saying, come on into my house, let me show you my house, and oh, you love my house, oh, thank you, and then you've got spirit there saying, come on into my place, we're going to show you, and this is why I time travel, because I'm actually in that era, mm-hmm. okay, I'm no longer in 2000, say, 18. All right, and 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 the Congress Theater was uh, 1920s. I think it was believe 1926 after I did the research on it after I left. Right. Because I had no idea what I was walking into, and it's interesting. But when they were done, they were done. I remember. And I said, I you were I, exhausted. I was exhausted. Right. But here's the thing. I remember the owner says, "Wait, I got one more thing to show you." I said, "No." They told me I was done. I remember that. Yeah. I, I cannot do this anymore. I mean, I was there for, what, two, three hours? Yes. But I, they told me now. They gave me a whole blueprint to what happened back then. 
and they were very good, and I, you know, was happy about that. But when they were done, they were done, and I had to honor that. And I believe that when you do that, that's a big thing. And, I agree. Right? Yeah. Okay. Now, sometimes we will uncover some not pleasant things. I mean, the Congress Theater had a lot of spirit in there. And I, I know that there was one thing that you wanted to talk about with the orbs. Yeah, the, the, it was pretty amazing. And okay. I get, we got very lucky. And I mean, yeah, we were lucky you were there to tell us where to set up the cameras. Because yeah. without you, yeah. we might not have uh, set up the cameras at the, the location. But I, I remember you telling us that uh, projectionists were still showing movies. That's right. To That's some right. of the other spirits yeah. in the building. And you told us to cover the hallway. And you told us to cover up the upper balcony seating mm -hmm. because that's where they're sitting. They're mm -hmm. going in and out of there. Mm -hmm. And so we did. Um, and I've never, and I'm not a huge or believer. It takes a lot for me to believe in that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I believe there's spirit energy. I, I believe, you know, when they're true orbs or mm -hmm. light anomalies, whatever you want to call them, you're catching a glimpse of their energy passing that they're not manifesting in mm -hmm. full as a full bodied apparition. But, uh, these blew me away. And I even sent them to professionals to look them over and the, the jaws dropped. It's What's the amazing. difference between an orb and a piece of lint? A lot of people always ask that question. And they and sometimes I get clients or people, you know, I don't know if I'm really looking at the spirit or is this just a piece of lint? Right. What, it, it, it could what be is your multi philosophy? things. That's what's so hard uh, about when it comes to these. I mean, they have to have intelligent movement. But a lot of times you could get some type of debris or lint that's you know, and then when you have uh, the lighting, the IR lighting, it yeah. reflects and almost looks like it's glowing, but it's actually a piece of dust, mm -hmm. lint, a bug. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially if it's dust, a lot of times you'll get multi things flying around at the same time, almost like a uh, snowball or snowflake effect. Got it. Uh, sometimes the lint could be very close to the lens and uh, will give it uh, a, a different look. And... Um, it is what it is. It's a, it's a piece of, you know, a lot of people want to believe it's evidence, but it. Yeah, but it's, you know what? Not. Your orbs, I, I, I've noticed something about your orbs. There's no way a lint can mimic those orbs. I, no, everyone no, this has is intelligent seen, movement. You've yeah. got some big orbs that are just, <laughs> and it's always in that area that you're getting, right. okay? And it's like, this is what's going on. I think you had something with the projectionist, okay? I, I remember one of the rooms that we were, taking a tour at the Congress Theater, and I went back in time and I saw that this man was the projectionist of this theater, and how he passed, was he was amazing. in the washroom, and he hit his head, and I saw all of it. Now, this was interesting that, you know, you had told me with the owner that there used to be a bathroom here. Right. You. There's no signs. <laughs> yeah, there was, he, he had his own, like, little apartment right. that was part of, uh, the projection room. Right. That's where he stayed. Right. And there was a small shower in there. There's no signs no. of a shower ever Completely being there. Completely remodeled. And I wouldn't know. I, I didn't know that. I was blown away when you said that. Yeah. Oh, my God. So there was a shower here. There, And this man, this is how he passed. And right. He, anyway, it's interesting. And then I see, you know, the theater's got all the, the seating. Okay? Right. And I said, I can see him showing a movie. Okay, and then the seats in the middle were going like this, and the owner said, every night, about three in the morning, there's a big light. I don't I see that, anything. At the far end of the right. stage. Right, like yeah. it's a blank projection, it's all you see is the light. Right. Okay, and the seats go back and forth, just as you said, and he showed the seats. Now, in that, you've got a clip. It's amazing, yeah. Of... The, the seats and the orbs going back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. You picked up Out on of the seat, the middle of the yeah. seat, there's about <laughs> snowball size, right. shoots up out like a rocket. How cool is that? that it's, it's amazing. It's right where you said. Exactly. Set the camera. And by the way, it's before, okay? I say it before you got it on camera. Oh, yeah. This was hours before. Exactly. Because yeah. I want to make sure for before. people that are yeah. watching that, you know, and I'm not trying to pride myself, but anything that I see, it's always before. Oh, it's pre-investigation. Exactly. Yeah. But you get it. Right. Right after you point, shoot, and you seem to get it. Yeah. And I'm grateful to you because I'm not a liar. <laughs> 
<laughs> you're gonna, you know, you'll say, yeah, it's right there. It's evident. That's why I love what you do because people that are think that they're going crazy, they're not crazy. Right. This stuff exists. Oh, it does. It does. Yeah, it really and does. I know it's, you know, unexplained, but that's why I have such high respect for what you do. Well, thank you. It's a huge thing what you do. Could you turn that off? Yeah, you're doing it. Turn it off. Keep trying. Almost there. Very good. Thank you. Now we need you to turn it on, on our command. Could you turn it on, please? So we know that it was an accidental. Very good. Thank you. We thank you for that. It's a way we can communicate. Okay, you can turn it off. Wow, that's, uh, that's pretty bright. Thank you so much. You could uh, you could turn it off. That is so cool how you can do that. I haven't had that happen in a while. You know, if you could do us a favor so we know who we're talking to, could you light it up if you're female? Once again, if you're a female, could you light up the flashlight again? All right, we're gonna change that now. If you're a male, could you light up the flashlight? If you're a male, could you please light up the flashlight? If you're a child, if you're a kid, could you turn it on? Wow. Wow, I didn't realize we were talking to a child. Cool. You know, if you could turn it off. Oh, cool, thank you. You know what, we're gonna guess your age, so we're gonna count. We're gonna keep on counting, and then once we hit your age, just make it uh, light up bright. Are you three? Three years old? Okay, I'm gonna change it now. Are you four? Four years old? Are you five? How about six? Seven? Seven years old? We still got to determine if you're uh, a little boy or a little girl. So I'll, I'll start out with a little boy. Are you a little boy? If so, could you turn on the light? Oh, thank you. You're a little boy. I wish we had a like a little race car or something. Yeah. For you. I do. Okay, you know what? Uh, looks like we got a little toy for you. You could thank Amber for that. Maybe you're getting sick of the same questions. 
You know, we apologize. It's just very exciting. Oh, thank you. What are some of the worst things that you've encountered that's happened personally to that's you a, or your body? Even your body. Just Let's two talk I, about that. Just two that I can, I can tell you about. Okay. The f first one, I mean, scared me to, yeah. to death. Yeah. And I wasn't even sure that was possible. You see stuff on TV, you know, uh, read books or documentaries on it. But now I know it definitely can happen. Mm -hmm. But I, I was at a, a case in Appleton, Wisconsin. And um, just get, I just got there about 20 seconds after walking the house. I'm standing there, and uh, she's going to start showing us around. And s I forget what side of the face, but I, I have uh, pictures and video footage of it. But something rips me open, um, r misses my eye, makes my ear bleed, and then a deep scratch down my neck. Oh, wow. So whatever was there felt threatened uh, that I was there. Did you and continue? for the first time wanted, yes. Well, you did. You know, I, it, I admit I was nervous. Yeah. But uh, you know, that's what I'm there for—to try to document everything. And uh, so I stood my ground, and I got attacked again about 2:30 in the morning. And uh, this time we have all of our gear rolling, wow. yeah, all the voice recorders, the cameras, and I'm standing near the same spot. And what, what we were going to do with the clients, we were going to do a group EVP session, which is basically, you know, we're going to sit down ask questions and see if we get any responses from the other side on recordings, you know, a voice recorder or mm -hmm. whatever gadgets uh, we were using at that time. And um, I'm burning in the neck. It's like someone took a match or a lighter to my skin and I'm burning. I'm like, guys, something's happening to me. Yeah. So they come with the cameras and uh, the flashlights and they, in front of their eyes, a lot, long line of welts formed oh. and it burned. Yeah. But at that time, we had, the, uh, like I said, the voice recorders going. And we, the very, I think we got five voices. Yeah. But the very last voice was a, uh, a male's voice saying the word rash. And uh, and they were probably happy to give it to you. <laughs> Isn't that sad? Yeah. But they, they, they the, know exactly what they're doing. That's the first time I got attacked. That's why I tell people, if you don't know what you're doing, you know, you really be careful. You know, when people go, well, I'll just surround myself with the white light. You're an amateur here. Right. That's not going to be enough. I agree. You know, you got to be really careful what you're walking into and be careful that you're not leaving with, with it. With it, yes. No, you're 100% you're right on that. You know, I mean. That's what I have you to think, to, to help me and, uh, you know, to teach me and a lot of things to protect myself and my family. Yeah. Because there's been a handful of times um, that... I left an investigation and something followed me home Yeah. for a week or two. And I remember one time I called you for assistance yeah. and I wanted to make sure I, I went, and I, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not going to a place to provoke. No. Especially if it's someone's home no. or business. The last thing I want to do is make things worse. I know. And most of the time you're dealing with someone's father, grandfather, right. grandmother, a child, or, you know, I, or somebody trapped from another generation. Yeah. Think you know, about that, so, right? Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm talking to him like I'm talking to you. Mm -hmm. You know, just if there's anything we could do to help yeah. or um, any messages they want to give out to any loved ones or, or anything we could do to help the family. I agree. And help the spirits. Help them on. too. Right. That's very They're important stuck. to me. Right. I mean, I think it's worse. You know, I don't know who has it worse. You know, the petrified families that's so afraid and they can't see. Maybe they just hear. Uh, the dogs and the kids usually will see them. Mm -hmm. Or the poor spirits that are left behind. That's got to be tough. Right. Okay? That because case meant a lot. Yeah, it did. Yeah. That was, you know what? I love when you call me and we do these things. I cannot say thank you enough beyond words. I, I can't think, thank you enough. Seriously, what you do, and, and this is why I'm so happy that you were a guest today, because I want to educate people more and more about different avenues of the spirit world and what it contains and what your part is. Because I always tell people, if we all work together, we're all doing a good deed. Right. Get rid of your egos. And just, you know what, just dive in and see what you can do because what you do, what I do, what everybody's got a part in this and you know what, it all comes together and guess what? The bottom line is everybody could sleep better at night. You're right. And I think that's, you know, this day and age is that's what some of the shows are missing. You, you see a lot of these investigative shows out there and everything's get the evidence and, yeah. you know, get the home run apparition. But the... 
they're missing the story of, of helping helping people. Yeah. You know, it's the, the most important part. And you know what? There is no story that is not big enough or not small enough because to me, if you're unhappy and you can't sleep or you're just having interruption in your family, that's good enough for me to want to come help you, just right. like you. So, you know what? Here's the moral of the story. I know you. I've known you for years. You have no ego, and that's probably why I love you so much and I respect you because you. you don't, and I don't because you know what? Get over yourself. Just right. go do Don't lose sight of the gift that you have and do it for the right reasons. Right. That's the whole moral of the story. And In which when yeah. I started uh, doing this, yeah. you know, I... It took me, you know, it took me a little bit into working with you to really learn what the purpose is of our, of everything. You know, I started out, admit, you know, it'd be cool to be able to capture this and that. Yeah. But once you start dealing with families in these cases, it kind of turned on me, and, and now the purpose is actually to help. Uh, You're right. It, you know, it is. But how great of a feeling? Sometimes we can't. But uh, but how great of a feeling when you can leave a family's home and it feels so much better. How great does that give you? Oh, I can't even put it into exactly. words. Exactly. Right That's now. everything. That's your reward. Right. So for people that would love to get a hold of you, Dave, how would they get in touch with you? Mainly through the website or Facebook, which would be ChicagoParanormalInvestigators.com. And uh, you could send a message or an email. Uh, our website's being, we have a new website. Should be up hopefully in the next week or two, just upgrading everything. Okay. But that would be the best ways to get a hold of us, either Facebook or uh, or our uh, website once it's up and running. Okay, great. So for those of you that really need proof that you're not going crazy, you would like it documented, you want anything with history, uh, with any landmarks, an old home, an old bar, an old anything, and you would love to have more footage, he is the man to call. All right. Well, thank you. So I mean that. Thank you for joining me. I loved it. Thank you for enlightening our viewers because this is what this is about. Um, I think the moral of the story is I know you can be afraid, but there are people like Dave and myself that, that can actually help. Okay. And yes, you can actually finally get your peace. All right. So yep. please subscribe to YouTube. I thank you again. Thank you so much. And there will be more videos coming. And we will have Dave on again. And all the best. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody.